Hi, in this video we're going to modify our to-do application that we created in the previous videos. Right now when we start this application or restart, it starts with this one item and if we add some items. And modify it. And refresh it. It's going to go back to the original item. And that's because this data is hard coded and it's coming from an array of objects. Let me show you. This is our array of objects and inside we have one object. We will modify this application and our new behavior will be to somehow save this data. Before we start working on it, let's look at our options to save the data. Our first option would be to save the data in a remote database and to access it via a web API. And this is how it works. Your browser sends an HTTP request to a web API and that HTTP request brings an instruction of what to do with the data. Your web API use those instructions either to delete data or update it or create a new record, whatever you want to do. This seems to be the most popular option to save data for web applications, but it's also the most complicated one. We could implement this option, but I am already working on a series of videos that do exactly that task. Let me show you. This is the playlist that contains all videos doing exactly what we just described. We're actually building our own web API and we're connecting our Angular application to that web API. I don't want to duplicate this work, so we're going to choose a different option. Let's go back to the list of our options. Our next option could be to save data locally, either in a text file or in a lightweight database, for example, SQLite. This is not a very good option for a web application, and this option is more commonly used for desktop applications and also for mobile applications. So we're not going to use this option. Our third option would be to use a browser to store our data. We have three options, cookies, session storage and local storage. I could probably make the whole video about those three options, but let's just quickly talk through it and decide which option we're going to use. Cookies are mainly used to send information between the browser and the server. And even though it could be an option to keep our data in a cookie, it's probably not the best option here. With session storage, all data will be erased as soon as the browser is closed. So I would say that's also not a good option for us. And the last option that actually the option we're going to use is a local storage option. Every time we save something in the local storage, it will be there until we delete it, either manually or programmatically. The most common usage for local storage is to use it for a shopping cart in a web application. So if you accidentally close your browser, when you come back, all items you put on the shopping list would be still there. Another very common usage is to keep JSON tokens that you use for authentication and authorization. After we decide what option we're going to use, let's go back to our application and start implementing that option. If you build this application with me in the previous videos, you can just continue building it. But if you didn't do it, but you still want to follow along, you can get it from my GitHub page. And that's what I'm going to do. Let me go to GitHub. This is a GitHub page where you can get the code. And I'm going to put this link in the description of this video. When you're on this page, we're going to click code, copy this URL. And I'm going to go to this folder that I created and I called it Angular to do list save. You can call it anything you want. And I'm going to right click in the middle of this folder and select open in terminal. And I'm already in this folder. So here I'm going to type git clone and I'm going to paste that URL. I'm going to press control V, enter. My project is loaded. I'm going to close this window. And now I have this folder. I'm going to go inside that folder. And I'm going to right click inside this folder. I'm going to select open in terminal. And you can see I'm again inside this folder. And once inside this folder, I'm going to type code space period, press enter. And it's going to open my application inside the VS code. I need to open the terminal. And to do that, I'm going to press control back tick. Or you can go to view and click on this option terminal. And inside, before I run my application, I need to install all dependencies. So I'm going to type npm install. As you can see, this folder node modules was created. And now Angular CLI is loading all dependency inside that folder. After it's done, we can type ng serve. And I'm going to use a flag dash all. And this will open this application in the browser. I'm going to press enter. 
And as you can see, our application is successfully compiled. Let me pull it to a separate window and I'm going to expand it. And let's look at our local storage. In order to do it, I need to go to developer tools. So I'm going to click on this menu and I'm going to go to more tools and I'm going to click on this developer tools. You can also use this shortcut control shift I or you can also press F12. Here we have a few options. If you don't see it right away, click on this double arrow and select application. And here we have all options we talked already about. So we have local storage, session storage and cookies. Let me expand local storage and I'm going to click on my URL. And here we have a table and one column is key and the other column is value. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create the key value pair and we're going to save it in this local storage. Let's talk about how we're going to do it. I'm on this developer Mozilla org website and I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. As you can see here, we can use this local storage object to access local storage. And if you click on this storage link, I already open it. On the left side, you can see all these methods we can use when we work with local storage. Out of these five methods, we're going to just use this get item and set item methods. Let me go back to VS Code and let's start using these methods. Here, I'm going to go to our source folder app folder to do list and I'm going to open this TS TypeScript file. Let's go to our own submit method and we're using this submit method when we create a task and we push the task to our array. As soon as it happens, our Angular application re-renders our HTML page and we can see the task on the screen. Every time we add a task object to our array, we're going to save it to local storage. And to do that, let's create a separate method. We're going to create this method below this on submit method. So let's make some space and let's call it save to local storage. Here we're going to type local storage. And you can see it's already on the list. I can just press tab. When I put period, we have a list of methods and the method we're going to use is set item. I'm going to open parentheses and I'm going to right away put semicolon here inside our set method. I need to pass two arguments. One is key and one is the value and the both strings. Let's name our key to do list. So I'm going to put single quotation marks to do list. I'm going to put comma. And here, just to test it, I'm going to put another string and I'm going to just say hello. Let me save it. I'm going to press Ctrl S. And before we go to our application, we actually have to call this method. So let me just copy it. Ctrl C. And I'm going to call it right after we push our new task to our array right here. So I'm going to say this, the name of the method, parentheses, semicolon. So I'm going to save again and let's go to our application. And I'm going to refresh the page and let's add a task. I already have this laundry on the list. So I'm going to click submit and let's watch this right side right here under keys and values. As you can see, our key value pair is being saved now and our keys to do list and our value is hello. Let's now talk how we can save the array of these objects at the string value here. We're going to use another standard built-in object and it's called JSON. And this JSON object has a few methods. Out of these four methods, we're going to use this JSON stringify and JSON parse. Let's go back to our application and we're going to go to our method where we save items to the local storage. I'm going to make some space and I'm going to use the JSON object. So I'm going to just type JSON period. And as you can see, I have this method stringify parentheses and I'm going to put semicolon right away. And inside, I'm going to put our array of objects. So I have to say this task array. And after we converted this task array into a string, we're going to put in a variable. So let's call it string JSON. So we're going to say let string JSON equals. And now instead of this hello string, we're going to put our string JSON. Let me save it. Control S. And let's go back to our application and test it. I'm going to clear my local storage and to do that, I'm going to click on this icon. Now I'm going to restart it and I'm going to add a task. After I click submit, as you can see, we have our array of objects safe here as a long string. Now that we have this value inside our local storage, we can start using it. Let's go back to VS code and let's scroll up. And we're going to put something inside our ng on init method. So I'm going to make some space here. 
This method runs when application is compiled. And this is where we're going to put some code that will check if we have some data in our local storage. And if we have the data, we're going to use it in our application. And if we don't have the data, we're going to go right back to our hard-coded array. To get data from local storage, let's create another method. And I'm going to call it get from local storage. And here we are going to access our local storage again. So I'm going to type local storage, period. And now we're going to use this get item method. I'm going to put parentheses, semicolon. And here inside the parentheses, I need to put the key. Our key is called to-do list. And after I get those items, I want to put it inside a variable. Let's call it items JSON string. So I'm going to type let items JSON string. And after we get that item, we actually need to see if we have anything inside this item JSON string. So let's have an if statement. And we're going to say if this variable item JSON string is not equal to null. And if it's not null, I'm going to parse it. And parsing means that I'm going to convert this long string into an array of objects. So I'm going to use the same object JSON parse method and inside the parentheses I'm going to pass our variable item JSON string. After we converted this string into an array of objects we're going to assign it to our array and since this array belongs to this class we're going to say this task array equals to that expression. Let's now go to our ng on init method and call this method from there. So we're going to say this, and this is our method. I'm going to save it, and let's test it in the application. So first I'm going to clear our local storage. I'm going to restart our application. I'm going to add one task, submit. We have it there. Now if we restart our application, as you can see, our list doesn't reset to the original list. Let me add another task, submit. Let me refresh again. As you can see, our list stayed the same. Now let's delete our method and see what happens. If I delete this task dishes and refresh, our list goes back to these three items. Same thing goes for our completed column. So if I click here laundry and I refresh our application, as you can see, this check mark is gone. And the reason for that is that we don't save it every time after we modify our list. Let's go back to VS Code and fix it. We're going to scroll down to our on delete method. And after we delete the task from our array, we're going to save this array to our storage again. So we're going to call that method this save to local storage. We're going to do the same thing inside this on check method. So I'm going to just copy it, control C, and I'm going to go all the way to the end of this method. And I'm going to paste it, control V. Let's go see if we have other methods on edit. We're going to call this method from here too. And we also need to add this line to this method. Let's save it, control S. And let's test our application one more time. I'm going to clear our storage. I'm going to refresh it. We have only one item on the list. I'm going to add a task. I'm going to refresh it. The list stayed the same. I'm going to add another task. Same thing. Let's delete an item. Refresh. Same thing. Let's complete one item and let's modify another one. Save it. And if I refresh it, the completed item is reset. Let me try to do it for doing dishes. And it does the same thing. Let's fix that back to our VS code. And here everything looks good inside this method. So let's go to our template. And let's see here. This is our checkbox. And it looks like we are not binding the value of is completed that boolean to our checkbox. So let's do it really quick. So I'm going to put in square brackets and I'm going to say checked. And I'm going to use our object so it's going to be coming from here. So it's T period. And this is our Boolean is completed. Let me save it. And let's test our application again. Let me clear the local storage again. Refresh. Let's add a couple of tasks. I'm going to refresh it. It stayed the same. Let's complete one of them. 
refresh and it looks like it's working. I'm gonna delete one item and edit one. Let me save it and let's refresh. And it looks like our application is working as intended. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.